Good afternoon. Today we're going to be talking about the anatomy of the kidney and we'll talk about some of the physiology that occurs within the urinary system, all in the hopes to maintaining homeostasis, as you already know. Let's do some of the anatomy of this kidney that you see here. Okay, here's the kidney. Keep in mind the regions of the kidney, this area here, all of this area here, that is the cortex of the kidney. So you can refer to that as the renal cortex. This area is here, here, here. All of these areas are actually within the renal medulla or medullary region of the kidney. This area here, this is a funnel, which is known as the minor, minor calyx. That's a minor calyx as well, and so are these here, here, and here. This area right here would be a major calyx, all right? Following it next would be the renal pelvis, will be this region here. And then finally, at the very end, we have the very beginning of a ureter, okay? In terms of blood vessels, we can see that here is a renal artery. It is red, so blood is coming in through the renal artery, moving up. We're skipping a blood vessel here, but we're going to talk about the interlobar artery. Then you can notice that there's a blood vessel that makes an arc. So that's known as the arcuate artery. And the tiny little ones that you see up here, right? This area here, those would be the cortical radiate arteries. All right? Notice that they are connected to this tiny little circles here. They look like little dots from, from where you're looking at it. But that right there is actually a combination of both the glomerular capillaries and you're seeing the outside of the Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule at this point, okay? So um, these areas here also, which is the um, medullary region of the kidney, uh, are referred to as pyramids as well, so keep that in mind, okay? Now, in terms of blood vessels going back out, carrying blood away from the kidney, we have this blue one that is the cortical radiate vein, then we have an arcuate vein, then an interlobar vein, and finally we would have a renal vein. And remember, the renal vein is going to go back into the inferior vena cava and it's going to go up right into the right atrium. And it will then move on to the right ventricle in the hopes to go through pulmonary circuit, the pulmonary circuit, and then eventually the systemic circuit. And so you'll have all of that blood being distributed throughout the entire body. Now I am zooming into this area of the kidney because I wanted to pay attention to the cortical region of the kidney and also, or the renal cortex, and here the medullary region right here, which is that renal medullary region, okay? So you see these tubes going down and up, and this tube over here, these are renal tubules. Um, you see this tiny little circle here that I'm pointing to with the straw? That would be the glomerular capillaries along with the Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule, and you see how it goes down that would be the descending loop or the sending loop of Henley and then up ascending loop or ascending loop of Henley and then we move down this area right here that would be a collecting duct and notice the collecting duct meets right at that funnel okay we are collecting urine right here with this minor calyx now this region that you see here has been magnified for you onto this area here, okay? So this area here is, has part of the renal medulla and it has part of the renal cortex. Let's get a little closer to this magnified regions of the kidney, the renal cortex and renal medulla. What you notice here, you can see that this red blood vessel that you see making an arc right? This is an arch. This is actually the arcuate artery. And then over here, you see the radiate arteries, right? Linking upon this um, structure here, 
that is open for you here has been cut for you let's get a little closer and you notice that this structure here that is branching from this uh, cortical radial artery would be the afferent arterial with an a as an apple so that would be the afferent arterial then we have the glomerular capillary right then you can see the Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule right here this tubule here that is convoluted is closest to the structure so we would refer to that as the proximal convoluted tubule we move down this would be the descending loop or descending uh, loop of Henley see how it goes down and so the filtrate will move down and then up into the ascending loop of Henley you see another convoluted tubule here is further away from the structure so we refer to that as the distal convoluted tubule and finally it is attached onto the collecting duct which again funnels into which what you're not going to see down here we would have a minor calyx all right another another thing to note here and pay close attention to which may not be very obvious are these capillaries here these capillaries are the peritubular capillaries these peritubular capillaries are the ones that actually bring back all that blood back to into systemic circu systemic circulation so let's go over the filtrate how do we make this filtrate so we have blood traveling through this this uh, arcuate artery will travel now into this radiator arteries here and now it will be pushed upon or, or the, the blood will go through this afferent arterial now you're going to have actually blood being squeezed through these glomerular capillaries okay and now the filtrate if you're healthy that is free of blood will go through the Bowman's capsule first then onto the proximal convoluted tubule but that is filtrate that is not blood because blood will continue on its way through the efferent arterial which is a little bit challenging to see here to notice here but you can see it better i think let's see oh you can see it better here you can see the afferent arterial with an a as an apple then you can see the efferent arterial and look at it there it goes okay it'll meet upon with the peritubular capillaries okay so i hope that makes sense to you so keep in mind what's happening to um, uh, glucose as it travels through these structures if you are healthy versus if you are ill now what i meant by ill is that i meant if you were somebody who is healthy you would ideally have uh, the blood travel through the afferent arterial, right? A as in apple. Then you're going to have the filtrate squeezed out from the blood, and you're going to have <clears throat> some glucose here uh, passing through, but it will go ahead and be reabsorbed uh, in the proximal convoluted tubule. But as it's reabsorbed, it'll go into the peritubular capillaries, okay? So you wouldn't find any glucose in these loops here in the descending and ascending loops um, that is if you do not have diabetes if you have diabetes however then you're going to have extra glucose in a sense that will travel through the afferent arterial it will get passed through a lot of glucose will get through here through the onto the uh, bowman's capsule then will travel onto the proximal convoluted tubule but now only so much will be reabsorbed and the rest of it, you know, what's going to happen to the rest of it? Well, that's the rest of that glucose will travel through the descending loop, through the ascending loop. These are our nephron loops or loops of Henle. And now it will travel through the distal convoluted tubule and then onto the collecting duct. And unfortunately, if it's in the collecting duct, where is it going to end up? It's going to end up in this minor calyx. Now onto the major calyx, finally onto the renal pelvis, and then onto the ureter. And then what? What do we have down here? Finally, that big pouch, right, where we collect the urine and then through the urethra. And then you test positive for glucose. Okay? I hope that really makes sense to you. Now, of significance here, we're looking at this structure here right that structure here is that same structure that is here 
but we've magnified it because I want you to pay attention to the, the, these, um, these blood vessels here. So we have the afferent arterial, so blood is tra traveling through the afferent arterial. It will pass through the glomerular capillaries. The filter will travel, will be squeezed, pushed through the here. Remember, we have much cheesecloth here, right? Do you remember that analogy? And now, so we're, it's going to be, the filtrate will be caught by the Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule, and the filtrate will now travel onto the proximal convoluted tubule, right? So um, keep in mind that the reason why we're able to carry out filtration, which is the first step of the production or creation of urine, is that the diameter of the afferent arterial is much larger than the diameter of the afferent arterial that you see here. So that causes for pressure to be higher in the structure, that is the glomerular capillaries, okay? Another thing that you should note are these podocytes. Remember that we have the fenestrated um, fenestrated glomerular capillaries that have holes, then you have that basement membrane that allows for the absorption of water, much water can get through, but it's sort of like a lot of cheesecloth, you can think of it in those terms. And then you have this final structure, which are actually cells, which uh, remember I had you interlace your fingers that create those filtration slits, remember that? Filtration slits, and you can see the filtration slits, you see them? All squiggly lines right here? So those are your fingers right there, right, interlaced. But these structures, individually, those are podocytes. Remember that. Okay, well, I hope that helps you. I will upload this soon and enjoy.